House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is issuing a 48-hour deadline on stimulus negotiations if they want to pass a bill before the election. This comes as Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says the Senate will vote on a narrow $500 billion package this week. Pelosi expected to continue talks with the Treasury Secretary this afternoon. Our next guest says forget 48 hours or even 48 days. Nothing will get done till after the inauguration. Ian Shepardson is chief economist at Pantheon Macroeconomics. Uh, Ian, how, I mean, by late January, is there... Uh, how much impetus is there to get a deal done by that point? I mean, I guess if it feels that urgent by then, it will in some ways be too late. Or, or tell me about your thinking here. Well, my thinking is that Mitch McConnell doesn't want to do a big deal because he can't get it past some members of his caucus. And he doesn't want to split his caucus to do a deal that the president wants because I suspect that McConnell thinks the president is toast. So... Why would McConnell spend his political capital doing a deal which is just going to get him in trouble with his members in the next Congress, whether McConnell is the minority leader or the majority leader? So I think that he offers this 500 billion bill, which the Democrats won't take. So nothing gets done. Then after the election, the lame duck session, I think nothing gets done. So we're looking at the new Congress in January. Now, my guess, well, my guess, just because that's what the polls say, is that it'll be a Democrat Senate, just, and a Democrat in the White House. So then we've got all three uh, branches of government working together, and that means we can have a bill ready for Biden's signature when he's president in late January, and then the money can start to flow in February. So that's four months from now, which is a long time when the economy is stuttering along yeah. as it is right now, and the virus numbers are shooting higher again. But I think it's the most likely outcome at this point. So, Ian, we spoke about at the top of the hour about markets, and uh, one of my guests said they don't think they're pricing in a Biden win at all because they're kind of burned by what happened in 2016. What happens if the polls are wrong again and uh, either Trump wins re a re-election or the Republicans keep the Senate? What, what would those scenarios tell you about what that next round of relief would look like? Yeah, well, the next relief would be a lot smaller under those scenarios because the Democrats have got a much more aggressive plan they, uh, they want to offer much more support to state and local government, and they want to reinstate the enhanced unemployment benefits that were uh, ended in, on July 31st, and they want to re-up the Paycheck Protection Program as well. So there's a lot of stuff that they would do that I think Republicans probably wouldn't do. But I've got to say, I find it very strange that markets, or some market participants anyway, are so skeptical about the polling because, yeah, the polls were a bit wrong in 2016, but not very wrong. Uh, Biden is way, way further ahead than, than Hillary ever was. He's going in the right direction. His favorability readings are much higher. And of course, after 2016, all the polling companies changed their methodology to account for the people that they'd missed in 2016. And in the midterms in 2018, they got it dead right. So, you know, I think it is, it's, it's perverse at this point to assume anything other than a Biden presidency. Whether it's perverse to assume anything other than a, a, a Democratic Senate, that's different because the margin there is a lot finer. Uh, most yeah. of the models suggest that the Democrats, if they do take the Senate, will only have 51 or 52 seats. So it's possible you end up with a Biden presidency and a Republican Senate, in which case there's way less stimulus. Now, that to me is a much more alarming scenario for stock markets than a Democratic sweep, which is not the way that most people in markets usually think, but I think under these circumstances, it's probably the yeah. right way to look at it. Well, that gives us a, kind of something to keep in mind as we're watching those results come in. Ian, appreciate it very much today. Thank you, sir. Ian Shepardson mm -hmm. on the outlook for the economy. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.